So we do have African countries promulgating a law known as the anti-LGBTQT policy. And we see countries like Namibia, Uganda, Ghana and Kenya doing a lot of work toward the anti-LGBTQT policy. Now, allow me to be a trans ideological man and I know it's queer, right? What? Now, this is a sign that the Africans are standing up for their autonomy and their independence. And I'm sorry, but I have to blow your bubble. This seems like a Trojan horse right in your culture. Now before we continue with the subject of the day, please be a trans believer of my work and subscribe to this channel before we take off. You see Adolf Hitler has a famous quote that says, Only the Jew knew by the persistent use of propaganda, heaven itself can be sold to the people as if it were hell and vice versa. The most miserable kind of life can be presented as paradise. The Jews knew this and acted accordingly. But the German and you watching this video has no slightest idea of this. So this is a biological warfare targeting to limit procreation and we are falling victim to it. Now you see brands like Gucci pay a American rappers to be shouting their names all day in the music so that they program the site to believe that to wear Gucci you've made it in life. I am the one, the way you can the same idea is being used because the more you debate on these issues, the more they become acceptable. The most pertinent question is why do African countries even table these matters as if all the problems have been dealt with within the social confines and landscape? You see, Africa has over 389 million people who are living in extreme poverty. Yet we spend time bribing bills and trying to protest to the people who don't even care about us. You see, we have above 389 million people living in abject poverty in Africa. Yet we spend all of our time trying to naturalize the unnatural to us. You see, the world applauds Africa for these anti-leftist ideologies that they're bringing in their bills. And the biggest question are, are we erecting these ideas to oppose the left wing or we're giving them relevance? I know this will seem like a Ball. But there's another quote that says, to conquer a nation, disarm its citizens. As long as we have citizens who are disarmed, policies. As Africa, we do not have control over our food. We do not have control over the medicine we take. And we do not have control over the media. So what's the purpose of doing bills without targeting what's really important? Arming the mind of the citizen. Now, we need to listen to Professor P. L. Olumumba as he tries to talk about the most important thing right now. Looking at other issues uh, like your challenges facing the ordinary people, there's also some concerns in terms of how leaders are conducting themselves. I mean, an example of the president of Uganda who has been power for quite a long time, the recent law that was passed by that parliament. Uh, many people say this is a violation of the human rights. On, on, on that one, I agree with the president. With, it's, not, it's not about President Museveni. I personally have supported President Museveni on that bill. And this is a point, this is an issue on which we'll have different opinions. The regime of rights which we are being asked to follow is a regime of rights that was imposed by the Western world in 1948, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. When the Universal Declaration of Human Rights was being initiated in Paris, no African country was independent. And at that time, they say the civil and political rights were the most important. Then they said that uh, economic and cultural rights were important. Then they say development rights. Now they say all rights are interdependent and therefore they are universal. But we must ask ourselves the fundamental question. Don't we have rights that are uniquely African? And on the question of this idea of being told periodically by the Western world that these are the rights that we must deal with, it is incumbent upon us to come out very clearly. When the white man came here and imposed laws on us, whether it's the common law, or the Dutch Roman law, they told us at that time that there is something called sex against the order of nature. Has nature changed? So we must be very slow to personalize laws. We must be very slow. And these arguments that they bring about bills re relating to LGBTQ, they'll never say them to the Arabs. They'll never go to Kuwait. They'll never go to Bahrain. They'll never go to Brunei. They'll never go to Saudi Arabia. They'll never go to Indonesia to tell them. 
It is Africans who they think are tails to be wagged. So on this issue, the, the government of the Uganda and the people of Uganda, I am with them 100%. There is no freedom outside of the law. How do you balance the, balance. the decision or the right to choose? Choose what? The choice must be limited according to the mores of a different community. And in any event, should we be talking about LGBTQ when we have no food on the table? And the danger, including with you journalists, is that now when you interview people, you have your own position that you want to impose on us. We refuse. You may disagree with me, but I'm telling you without batting an eyelid and unapologetically that some of us oppose LGBTQ and you who are anchors. We are, I'm now telling you because I've seen it with other anchors from other parts of the world. You have a position and you want to impose on us. We refuse. Yours is to midwife to ensure that my views, if others have a different view, you go and interview them. But from where I sit, I oppose LGBTQ with every ounce in my life. Including that they must be killed. And who said they must be killed? No, there is nobody who has said that, Mamas. I want you to read the law. They have not said that. Nobody has said that. Finally, I'm looking forward to deliver the lecture. I know you don't want to yeah. get into the content of the letter, but there's also uh, people in South Africa who are saying because the EFF took a stand and called President Museveni not to sign this uh, homosexuality bill into law, how can they invite you? You know, it is tragic that we are living in a world where there is a competition of ideas. And then you are telling people, only invite people who think like you think. I find that intellectually insulting. I know many people, many friends with whom I do not share views on many things. But when we disagree, we disagree in an agreeable manner. If you are inviting people, you want to associate with people who think the way you are, then that is the unanimity of the grave and the graveyard on the cemetery. And that is unfortunate. Democracy is a competition of ideas. And I don't impose your ideas on you and you don't impose your ideas on me. Those who think like that really are people who defy definition. They say repeating words several times will end up making the subject acceptable. And do you really think those behind the alphabet community are daft to the point that they think there is not going to be a backlash in Africa? Actually, you think this is a win, but to be quite honest with you, this is exactly what they want you to do, to put this agenda in your parliament, to put this agenda in your books. One day your children will be reading these policies and they will ask you, what is fluid? But during my time, well, it was water. They'll ask you what is binary. The conversations you'll be naturalizing all your life will be a debate in Africa and will actually prompt more curiosity to your children. So this is when the citizen will get disarmed. So the question is why then all of a sudden a continent with 389 million starving mothers and children spend time drafting policies that have nothing to do with the greater population? Why is it we're spending more time drifting from the main agenda which is how to defeat poverty and bring sustainable growth in Africa? Why is it we're bringing so much triviality to get to make it the African agenda? To me, Africa, a continent that is facing a lot of current account deficits, the draining of the sovereign wealth funds, spending time to make policies that have nothing to do with its people. See, this is what I'm going to leave you with, a speech by President Paul Kagame as he just asks a simple question. Is this our problem? Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, you were speaking about a modern Africa and I'm here with the Bay Area Reporter, which is the LGBT newspaper, and for people who don't know what LGBT is, that's the gay and lesbian community. So I'm wondering, you've done so much for women in Rwanda, and they have so much power. I'm wondering, is the LGBT community a part of the future of Rwanda? Uh, 
I, I don't know if I understood what you, you just asked, but I, I, I guess I understand, I have understood. But. LGBT. Homosexuality. Yes. It, it hasn't been our problem. And we don't intend to make it a problem. Uh, so we, we, we are struggling with all kinds of problems we have. And as I said earlier, we want to have everybody involved, participating. That means, as I said, being there for each other again is because we mind being uh, supportive of each other, we mind uh, the stability that comes with allowing people to live in harmony. And I think we've made good progress on that. So this far, since, as I said, that is not a, a big problem for us, I don't want to make it a problem.